For, your name is Doug Hill. Doug Hill. And you're the incoming president for the Rochester? Pre president elect for the Rochester Education Association. Um, I'll start officially on July 1st. I've been the vice president for the past four years and a two time member of the bargaining team. So we had a lot of, we had 157 retirees and 74 were teachers this year, the, right the, tonight? The current number, I believe, is 74 teacher retirees, which um, you know, is about 8% of the total district population as far as the teachers are concerned. So you know, that's a sizable amount. So as, as a teacher, right, what do you teach? What do you teach? I'm a fourth grade teacher at Long Meadow Elementary School. Okay, that's where my kids went to school. <laughs> um, so, how do, how do you think the loss of the you know these eight percent, the seventy four teachers, are going to affect education in in Rochester, in Rochester Homes? Well, I think we have a very strong group of teachers. Don't get me wrong, but as I mentioned to the board tonight, you know, there's no replacement for experience. Um, you know, just being able to sit and talk to those people on a daily basis, or walk down the hallway to their classroom during your, your planning time, and, and, and bend in the ear for a few minutes and say, "Hey, this is going on in my classroom." What should I do? I mean, those veteran teachers that have been through all of this have just an abundance of experience and, and knowledge and, and can really help guide you through anything. And there's going to be a gap there. Now. I know we still have veteran teachers. We still have teachers with lots of experience. But it's going to be fewer and far between now. And as I also noted to the board, compounding part of that problem is because the district uses a third-party substitution service, it's becoming increasingly more difficult for these retirees to now substitute in the district because of the Office of Retirement Services, um, the way that they have it worked. I, I didn't know, I'm, I guess I'm not, I haven't been that involved with all this stuff, but uh, tell us, why did that happen? Was it just a budget move to hire the, the outside firm? Well, initially they, they went to an outside firm to kind of, you know, kind of pool all of the substitutes in this district and other districts, and now there's a group of people to, to, to choose from when it comes time to substitute teach. So it was a little bit of a cost-saving measure, and it seemed you know, rather harmless at the time. But now the Michigan's uh, Department of, uh, or the Office of Retirement Services has decided that there's a core group of uh, services that people deliver at the state level in education that those things cannot be contracted out to a third party. And part of the reason is to avoid what they call this double dipping, where somebody would retire and then come back to work on a contract basis, usually as an independent contractor. And you know, Rochester Schools has done that with some of its administrators and some of its um, you know, uh, principals and whatnot. So the state has tried to kind of close that little hole there where these people are maybe making a little bit more money than possibly they could have or should have. So that, I think that's one of the reasons why they tried to close that gap, but getting pinched off in that were some you know, fairly innocent folks who would just like to come back into buildings and, and substitute teach, you know, a, a handful of days each month. Right. So, so that's uh, these are experienced teachers with, that had been within the Rochester School that, that are prohibited from coming back and, they, and substituting. They would, they would have to forfeit their pension and, and suspend that. They couldn't collect on their pension if they came back to substitute in our district. Now, our district does hire... Um, long-term substitutes independently of that of that program so a teacher could come back and do a long-term substitution system but as um, Superintendent Pruneau mentioned tonight a teacher who earns more than one-third of their final earnings would then also have to suspend receiving their pension so you know they're kind of in a catch-22 there they, if they come back and do a long-term there's a risk I suppose of them maybe going over that threshold of, of monetary uh, income that they could get and then the opposite of course is the fact that they can't go to work for the PESG company that handles Where is that company based out of? I never heard I, of that. I don't know where they are located at. You want to talk to PESG? PESG. I'm not even sure what the acronym stands for <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. Um, so I guess another instance though where we're losing now we're kind of losing them twice. We're losing yeah. them as teachers for our kids, as experienced teachers. And also they can't, because of these income limits, they can't come back and teach our kids even as uh, substitutes. Yes. So okay. It's, you know, it, it, it's really, it's going to be, we're going to be hard-pressed to make up for that lost experience. And, um, you know, that's really a concern I think I share with, you know, the other leadership in the REA and the leadership in the district, too. And I think the school board is very much aware of that. It's, it's, there's going to be a little bit of a vacuum there that we're going to have this gap now where we don't have that just wide breadth of, of experienced teachers available to us anymore. Great. Thanks a lot.